I have a bucket list. I want to travel more. I want to spend more time with my children. I want to embrace life. And I don't want to forget the people that I love. Gary wanted to learn to fly a plane, ride a horse and travel in a hot air balloon. And he did all of those things. I wanted to spend more time with my grandchildren. I wanted to travel around Australia. And I wanted to tell my wife that I love her. Welcome to Four Corners. It's a confronting question. What would you do faced with a diagnosis of dementia? The three people in tonight's program are amongst the more than 400,000 Australians living with dementia. Those rates will increase dramatically as baby boomers outlive all previous generations. Dementia is now the second biggest cause of death in Australia and is predicted to become the biggest. The progression of the disease is different for everyone. And as you'll see in tonight's program, so too are the ways people respond. Producer Janine Cohen follows three people living with dementia and the loved ones who watch over them. These are extraordinary stories of love and dignity as they deal in their own often surprising ways with being part of a modern day epidemic. We're in uh, Christmas Hills and we've been here eight years. We love it. Where's the rag going? I've stopped work a couple of weeks ago. I'm in retirement early so that Mandy and I can do all the things we want to do before you can't do things. So. Gary has a really rare type of the younger onset Alzheimer's disease that is a familial type. So there's a faulty gene which is responsible for this type of dementia. This one. Yeah. Gary's mother, Jan, started to develop dementia when she was quite young as well. She was in her 50s. Once she got sick, she said to me, I hope you don't get this. And then I asked her, why is she saying that? And she said that her dad had the same thing and his two brothers and their sister and their mother and it went on and on. So when she told me that, I, it was kind of a bit of a punch in the head sort of thing because I didn't know anything about it. In 2001, Gary had a gene test when it became available and found out that he was gene positive, so he knew that he would also get this disease. Yeah, I've just always wanted to know, because I think you could plan your life better, that's all. Like, if you were going to get sick, then you'd change your thoughts about what to do, when to do it, and stuff. So, that's what we've been doing anyway. <laughs> he really wanted to make sure that I had an understanding of what our lives were going to be like. He said to me, I really understand if this is too much for you and if you can't do this. But I was madly in love with him and there was no way that that was going to change my mind. Well, I'm hoping that they'll find some kind of drug that might slow it down or even stop it. So I'm um, kind of positive to, to think like that, which doesn't make you feel doom and gloom all the time. So that's always a good thing to think about. If you're feeling a bit gloomy, just there's a lot of people doing a lot of work trying to find something, even if it just slows it down. I mean, that could happen any time. Mm, that's good. So, and be positive. I don't know. That's what I'm doing anyway. I can recommend it <laughs> to all those people who are watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's 
very difficult coming to the realisation that you can't do as much as you used to be able to do. I can't put a date on when it really became difficult. I was losing the zest, the zoom, the desire to go and achieve things that I knew I could achieve and you stop three or four things and then you think, oh God, what am I doing? I don't do anything anymore. And that's, that's, it's like a, a circle all the time. Right? Every now and again, when Brian feels bad about himself and says, oh, maybe I should go somewhere because it's not fair on you, I just remind him that the diagnosis was our diagnosis, that it's not just him, it's something that is in our life that we need to deal with. I remind him constantly that he is Brian Fisher, who happens to have Alzheimer's. He is not Brian Alzheimer's, because Alzheimer's could take over your whole life if you let it. Morning. Hi. You sleep well? I did, I did, I did. What? What's on today? Uh, Tuesday, uh, just around the house today, and I might go out this afternoon do some shopping this afternoon. So I get it in good work clothes or whatever? Yes, good work Great. clothes. No, I thought I might go down the street. No, I need some help, please. Let's close that one. Close that wardrobe. Brian's unable to make yep. choices. Let's just grab yourself something out of there. I was noticing that he was standing for ages in front of his wardrobe, not knowing what to put on. Your shoes. On bad days, he may stand there and not be able to choose that, in which case I just quietly take them out and put them on the bed for him. Could jump in a mattress shirt. That's good. That'll do. Okay. okay, I'll get you a jump in a match for you. Okay? Yep. Heather keeps me going. I feel very guilty that I am the cause of a dampening of her enthusiasm. You know where your socks are? Hopefully. Look. Just on the right hand drawer, next drawer to the right. This one? Yep, I think you might find them there. Socks. And undies, right on the top. Oh, beautiful, thank you. All done. Good. Brian was an academic. He held down very high positions during his lifetime. He was a principal at, at the age of about 30 and he became a district inspector at 37. Don't forget to have a shower. Oh. Okay. He then went on to manage school support centres. He was in charge of over 300 schools. There was nothing he couldn't do. And he fitted so many things into a day. He could work on two or three things at the same time. Oh, nice and quiet this morning. He gave up rotary. He gave up tennis. He was reluctant to volunteer for things that he used to volunteer for. He stopped accepting invitations to places. It's not Thursday, right? No, it's not today. <laughs> and as well as that, I noticed that he kept losing a few things. And this was about 2000, 2002. He was falling asleep at a table, just falling asleep for no reason. The psychiatrist decided that he really didn't need a neuropsychological test that he was really just having some problems adjusting to retiring. Could you grab me two oranges, please? Just two oranges. It just got worse for him. We had three awful years of tension and friction and a feeling of absolute hopelessness. Twelve months ago, Brian was getting so frustrated that he started becoming a little physically aggressive, which was just not him. And he would be angry and throw things, and on one occasion he, he actually hit me across the face, which was just devastating for him, because he's a kind, gentle man who would not approve of that in anybody whatsoever. I'm embarrassed to talk about it. I'm ashamed to talk about it. But yes, I have hit her. She, she tried to help me with something uh, once and put her hand up 
towards my face. And I said, don't do that. I don't know why. I, just not me. Here was I hitting the person I love, hitting my best friend. She puts herself out so much to help me. And I'm starting to get physically violent, I suppose. OK, I'll put, so I'll put them away, I'll show you where they are. Afterwards, he would come back and he would just cry and he would just say, you don't deserve this, I don't deserve this. I'm saying these things, but I know, deep down, I know that I love you and that we've got everything going for us. Why is this happening? I'm 58 years old and last June I was diagnosed with younger onset dementia. Oh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. Gosh, nice. it's been a while. About three years ago I started to notice little things, language, just occasionally, you know, words weren't there. Does it still work? Not really, no, okay. no. I, I do a little bit of casual work. Yeah. At work, at my job as a receptionist, I had trouble with new technology. I like that. I would notice that I had lots of spelling mistakes or I had multiples of the same letter in a word that didn't belong there. So how was the traffic in this morning? And I went to a GP and the first time it was very much pointed out to me, oh, they'll all just be symptoms of menopause. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you take a seat there? Thank you. You know, it was getting on towards two years Why and, yeah, I guess frustration and just not having any answers. I kept persevering and finally I was given a referral to the Cognitive Dementia and Memory Service, but I call it the Memory Clinic, at Barwon House here in Geelong. It's another sort of more complex naming test. Susie was diagnosed with younger onset dementia in June last year. In particular, a variant, one of the frontotemporal dementias, and that involved testing her memory. If you have a look at this object here, mm. what, what's that? Yeah. Not just her straight recall, but her ability to manipulate information in her mind. Very specific language testing, her understanding of words, her ability to retrieve words. We've got a nail, I think, yeah. at the top. So. Her ability to describe yeah. concepts and her ability to imagine situations. I'm so grateful I found you. <laughs> I do often wonder, Dr Watson, if I still would even have a diagnosis if I wasn't referred to the to memory, the memory clinic. clinic. Yeah. 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 There was a whole team of people that assessed Susie, including neurologists, GPs, myself, various allied health people, and neuropsychological testing particularly important. What's happening with your symptoms these days? Uh, I think it's still a, a luckily fairly slow degeneration. Mm -hmm. um, I know my brain feels more chaotic. I still have that slowness of thinking about how You've really the got to words. make an effort yeah, to get yeah, the right words out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I've noticed that. It can be quite difficult to deliver a diagnosis of a progressive degenerative disorder to anybody, but particularly in somebody Susie's age. It happens often. Everybody wants to know how long have I got? How, what's, what's the rate of progress? And uh, the answer is invariably, don't really know. People see you functioning, so mm. they have trouble accepting your diagnosis. There are statistics that can say people with a diagnosis like Susie's can last somewhere between two and ten years. Some people go downhill very, very rapidly. Again, depending on the flavour of dementia, that rate of progress can be different. Are you, are you cooking? Yes, yes okay. I am. I had already noticed and it has increased recipes that I knew so well that I'd had. That's what you said, things yeah, that were in your yeah, head and were, were starting to yeah. go and yeah. you know I'll think about a recipe that I've cooked maybe for 20, 30 years. Right. I do remember doing... Now There's no specific cure nor any specific drug treatment at this point for younger onset dementia. There's a lot of research going on. So yeah, we've got the koala. However, the fact that there is no cure doesn't mean there is no management. So it's Australia. It's very important to, to make that distinction. So looking at the front of the brain, we'd be looking at 
whether there's any shrinkage of brain tissue. I guess when you do get diagnosed, it's a shock. The difference between what we call grey matter and white matter there. Yes. But you also then have to think, well, it is a positive. I'm going to have it. I know what it is and I'll deal with it my way. Particularly when you've got frontotemporal types. Gary's now 54 years of age and he's been living with younger onset Alzheimer's disease for about seven years now. Are you okay? You all right? Mm. I'm a psychologist and I retired from that work because Gary's support needs started to increase. I'm not sure that I get it. Last August, the decision really had to be made to place Gary in care. And that was an admission that I couldn't look after him by myself at home anymore. <laughs> Hello. Gary became psychotic. He also developed myoclonic jerks, which can make you trip and fall. And he had those jerks all day and all through the night as well. It was 24 hours a day monitoring and it just became too much. Okay, you ready? So where we are now is an aged care facility and it's not what Gary wanted, but there isn't currently any other choice available. He wanted to be in a place among his peers around younger people with similar interests and similar music tastes. Carrie was always petrified of this happening to him and one of the greatest things that he was most fearful of was being left alone and forgotten about. It's really quite tiring and exhausting and it's very, very difficult to watch um, the process of this disease um, and the impact that it has on a person, particularly if you just adore them. <laughs> Professor David Ames is Gary's psychogeriatrician. Hello Mandy, hello Gary. Hello. And has been hello, since Gary. 1995. So he's worked with us at every stage. We often see this sort of restless jiggling. How is he going with the myoclonic jerks, the little twitches that he gets sometimes? I think when he's lying down and relaxing, we see a lot of them. Yes. Yeah, so they're still a bit of an issue. You feeling all right, Gary? Yeah. Good. Good. Who's this here? Who's with you today? That's Mandy, isn't it? She's in nearly every day. Gary's got a slightly unusual illness. Probably only two or three percent of the patients we see with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease have familial onset Alzheimer's disease. The majority have late onset or sporadic Alzheimer's disease. Is everything going okay? Someone of Gary's age, who's in his mid-50s, who's relatively healthy, who's looked after his health through his life, unless he gets pneumonia, this thing might go on for some years to come. Mm. Let's have some breakfast, huh? What have we got? Porridge. So you ready? You ready? <gasps> Open. Yes. Open. Open. Beautiful. Come on. I like it. You like it? Good. That's great. <laughs> I'm glad you do. It's nice. Oh, kiss. No, blow. <laughs> I misread that one.
People with dementia are twice as likely to die of pneumonia as people who haven't got dementia. Oh. They're twice as likely to die in accidents. And that might be anything from walking in front of a bus to tripping over and breaking your hip. Good. Yeah. That's excellent. The treatments we've currently got help some people a bit for a while, and they're certainly better than nothing. Mm. Most people would like to know what they can do to prevent themselves getting dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. There's a little bit of evidence that control of vascular risk factors, things like hypertension, high cholesterol, cigarette smoking, may have a little bit of an impact. And studies that follow older people through over time seem to find that those who are physically active, intellectually engaged and socially engaged may do better over time than those who are not. <laughs> Mandy's gone into this with her eyes open, but it's very difficult both to see someone you love deteriorating and the sheer number of hours that you spend caring for that person. I think this has been a very long, difficult road for both of them. Mm -hmm. Nice kiss. Thanks. <laughs> and so, um, they're the moments that I kind of live for, I guess, because um, it's a bit of recognition um, that you do know who I am, which is quite lovely. Um, it's very hard to gauge, I think, um, how much um, Gary knows me at times. Um, so I think, you know, there are little moments and, and times when I think he does. Ooh. But um, a lot of the time now, I'm not sure that that's the case. Generally speaking, if people are really friendly to Gary, he'll be lovely and friendly back. Mm. Um, and I have heard him tell some of the nurses that he loves them. <laughs> mm. So I'm not sure that um, being told um, I love you is kind of exclusively for me. <laughs> um, but I'll take it. I'll take it every time. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
disease. Getting one form of a diagnosis. It affects people quite randomly. Every demographic of society will be affected with about the same percentage. I'm getting old, maybe I'm going to be one of those people. Be... We do a lot of work on risk reduction. We're now getting some lovely tablets to take. <laughs> there aren't a lot of medications available, but you can do lots of things in your lifestyle. All those classic things of not smoking, limit your alcohol intake, healthy diets, physical exercise, and every piece of research that comes out re-emphasises that physical exercise is probably the number one thing that is going to um, lower your risk. It's not uncommon for me to hear that it takes two years to get a diagnosis. It took a lot longer for us to have a diagnosis. It was 11 years. Our GP first noticed that there was something wrong. But unlike you, Brian's language is perfect. His comprehension was perfect. He can read, write. He's very eloquent. And so therefore they felt there was nothing wrong with him. When I sat down, I said, Mr Fisher, uh, Brian, we have a, a diagnosis of dementia. And my first word, bullshit. <laughs> I did not have dementia. Old people get dementia. I'm not anywhere near 80. I was 79, I think. <laughs> <laughs> my diagnosis has helped me come to grips with some of the things that I've always put off for tomorrow. I don't need to do it. Yeah. It does yeah. that. Now I would say it's a pity that all that didn't happen 10 years earlier. I should have been much more receptive. What is dementia? Because that's the question. Susie and I have been best friends since we were 18, 19 years old, so we've come a long, long way together. I bet she was happy to see you too. It was really hard when Susie first told me that she had been diagnosed with dementia because, like a lot of people, I think of dementia as something an old person has. But I said, oh, Susie, we've got 20 years. You've got 20 years to worry about that. And she said, no, Nick, she said, this one, it could be anywhere between two and eight to ten years. And oh, I just, I think we both shed a tear. I have a job for you, Nicola. Yeah. We're going to go through some photos. I'm going to get organised to start this, this is digital photo world. Well we are. So you want your children? Yep. And yes, I do. I want my children and family, and I want your children. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> How old is that? Oh. oh dear. I remember I was crying because I was leaving you. <laughs> you wouldn't have been 20 then, no. would you? No. Uh, no. That was that? probably pre champagne. It was probably Bailey's. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah we used to drink Bailey's. That was our Gladstone drink, wasn't that it? That was, yeah. that was. Where were we there? We were in Melbourne somewhere. One of the things I want to focus on this year is to make a digital oh. memory album. Oh, oh they are all my kids. Oh, goodness. It will keep the people that I love the most and the people that have meant the most to me in my life. And that's my 50th in Dalesford. It will keep them alive. That's my hope. That will keep them alive in my memories for as long as possible. Yeah. It's a beautiful photo album. And I really would love to complete photo albums for my children. Kate and Sam. Mm, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's it's... one of the last photos I've got of them together. So you need to write these things down then, I don't I you? I should that's write what... on the back You need to write on the back of them all so yeah. that you can, I think... because in time you won't remember no. where they were. Yeah. It's just hard to imagine that there'll be a day that Susie won't remember our past, her life, everything that's in these photos. Yeah, it's hard, hard to believe that that may be the case one day. So it is important that she does these digital photos, but it's really difficult to imagine. And all our kids. <laughs> <laughs> Little faces. God, the memories, the times we've mm, had. That's yeah, five of them together, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't 
comprehend not, not knowing these faces. None of them. Yeah. How do you um, come to terms with not knowing your own children? I love you. I love you too. <sighs> we'll be right. We'll be right. <laughs> well, we've got to just do a we've lot of fun times in the exactly. meantime, don't we? Yep, we do. We we've got to make new memories. We, wow. Yeah, make yeah. new memories. That's right. More memories. More memories then. More memories. Mm. More memories for the photo album. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh my goodness. What? Yeah. <laughs> Is it a goal? Is it a goal? <laughs> you excited? Roger's coming. He's coming to visit you. Now? Yeah, very soon. Oh. Yeah. Who? Roger. Your friend Rog. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Be happy with that. Oh no. <laughs> That's good. good. That is, it's really good. Put your arm in. Yes, it's Rog. How are oh. you, mate? Oh, good to good. see you. <laughs> there are a lot of people who find it very, very difficult to come and visit and spend time in a nursing home. Oh, that's oh, oh. beautiful. Just go down here. It's very, very confronting, but it is really, really helpful for us when people do visit. Here we go. Look at the photos, guys. Who's that? Who's that? Do you want to lie down? No, you've got to stay up because we're going to have lunch, guys. Lunch won't be far away. Yeah. Oh, so we'll have a bit of food. <laughs> Come on, guys. Up this way. And you're making me work. Oh, that's the way. Lean on me. Come here, guys. Good man. I met Gary just after high school. Busy morning. My friendship with Gary hasn't wavered. Like, I've always been close to Gary. Oh, oh, guys. Oh. When he was diagnosed, obviously it was really hard in the beginning to come to terms with. Just a little bit of assistance just helps and just maintaining that connection with Gary is really important to me. Um, so, because there's still Gary there, aren't you guys? You're still in there. So, here guys, we'll try this. That's it. So, there's no struggle for me to come in here and help. It's all done with love. And uh, that's what it's about. I love bringing Gary home and I do it as much as I can. When Gary's home, there is sort of a sense of familiarity. I'm going to put the kettle on. So it's lovely to watch his responses and his reactions to things, and particularly, you know, when he loves having a bit of a look outside into the garden and having a look and seeing what's in and around the house. Uh -huh. Hey, having a bit of a look around? <laughs> okay, well you have a look. I'd love Gary to be living here at home if he was well enough. Yes. 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 That would be great if we could manage that. Yes. Cheese. Hi, it's me. I'm Hi. here again. <laughs> I'm here again. I think one of the cruelest things about dementia is that it starts to rob you of the ability to communicate. So it's about finding different ways to communicate with body language. Oh. You're pretty cute. Ooh. It's really difficult to lose little pieces of the person that you love. Sometimes that happens quite quickly. At other times you kind of don't realise that it's happened. And I think the hardest thing to witness is watching someone that you love suffer. Hey, 
are you going? Are you checking your list? Good, 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 checking good. your list? Yeah, I did hang the washing out. Is that I didn't check it. You, you made the bed? Yes. This one here? I know the dishwasher. Yep. Haven't done it. Okay. I'm about to do it. Fine, no worries. What I have with it? Oh, no, I think I can remember where everything goes. If I never had this list, I would be in a state of confusion. I know that the first thing I've got to do is to boil the kettle, but what else was on during the day? I think I had to go to the post office. What else was I going outside for? What did I have to get dressed for? I reckon that dishwasher works better on the sensor. Me, yeah, I do too. Yeah. Today's a really good day, and the list and everything is working extremely well. Now, on a bad day, Brian will wake up and he will just say to me, my head's a fuzz. Everything's jumbled. I can't think. I, I, I can't do this. Um, uh, and he just has a, a real panic. But it's explaining that the head's just messed up. And on those days, we just modify that list. What have you got left on the list? Hey? Keep going, keep going. I'll just, sorry to interfere. Sorry. Okay. Heather's been through hell, but the worst part is she's had to make so many huge changes because she can't rely on me. I need Heather on my arm all the time. But I don't want to have Heather on my arm all the time. I'm not fair to her. She, oh. If there's anything that you need help with, that you're not sure where it goes, just leave it on the bench and I'll pop it away for you later on. Okay? okay? We know we love each other. We know that we have been colleagues and best friends and husband and wife. We know that the relationship is different. But I just keep saying to him, well, I'm your carer now. And, you know, we've got a fourth relationship now. The others are still there and they are still there. You still make new memories. The hardest thing was telling Kate and Sam, but I knew that I had to do that really early on. So I did that within a couple of days of the diagnosis. Oh, it's got your little something. Is it? it was incredibly hard because it's not what you think at 57 you're going to be telling your children. Thanks, darling. Mm -hmm. Love you. You being here is a great Mother's Day present. We don't hide things from one another is so important for me that they know everything about it. Oh, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. There's a chance that I've passed on that genetic mutation to both Kate and her brother, Sam. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. No Happy Mother's Day. I love you, thank you so much. So mum has put a sample of her DNA and some blood in a bank in Melbourne. My brother and I have chosen not to test it, I guess because we're both still quite young and we don't feel that it's necessary to test it right now. For me I'm not sure that I ever will. I just don't know if I want to know. I think that the way I'm going to live my life is that assume that I have it and live the best life that I can but hope that I don't. Oh, 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 mooch. It's, you know, I don't think it's anything for me to be too worried about now. I'd much rather focus on mum. Mm. That's lovely, thank you. I've told people who I love dearly that unless they want a good slap, don't ever refer to me as a dementia sufferer. I'm not, you know, I'm not suffering with dementia. I'm, I'm just um, another person diagnosed at a younger age and there's a lot of people out there like me. Well, I feel very spoiled. Very spoiled. Mm. Good girl. Ooh, it's a big, bad, scary wolf. I don't want to talk to him. He's a monster. Does he look like a monster? Brian loves reading to the children. Three pigs involved. He also makes up stories about different characters. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. Just because I've got big, pointy teeth. And the next time he sees the grandchildren, they want the next episode. Which was fine, except... 
he kept forgetting where he was up to or even what the story was about. Hey, that reminds me. I don't think I... I realise, because of Alzheimer's, there will be a time that comes when I am unable to read. I'm a bad guy. But I do still want to have that contact with them. Did you know Poppy has difficulty remembering something sometimes? Mr. My husband is still my husband. He's still my friend. He's the best he can do. He's still a dad and a granddad. I think so, but I can't remember. OK, he has his times, but he is still that person. He just happens to have Alzheimer's. I'm sure that there must be a time when whatever is in here doesn't work and yet a person has their eyes open and they're still breathing. Sorry, I can't come to the thought of not having, not being able to interact with my children or my grandchildren, my family. Good job. So you're getting this beautiful rotation into your lower back. Your upper back is quite stable. There's been some good research in other types of dementia that shows that exercise, particularly exercise and company, can help stave off or slow down the progress. I know your brain is wanting to use your arms. What I've taken on is Pilates, which I really, really love. Deep breath in as you go. I can feel it clearing my head as well. And just open your eyes up. Push, 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 push. I started to learn, certainly before my diagnosis, but definitely after it, the importance of all forms of exercise. I'm energised. I feel yeah. so different than when I walked in. Mm. Yeah. I know I'm physically tired, but... Like Gemma says, something's switched in on in my brain. Continue to glide. They now believe, you know, what's good for our heart is good for our brains. That's good. My dementia diagnosis, it is what it is. We can't fix it. And my form of dementia, there's no treatment to take along the journey. So you only have two options. To crawl into a ball and um, let it come get you. Or you just get out there and live. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm 45 years of age now and I met Gary when I was 28, about 17 years ago. I like to be there when he wakes up in the morning. Good morning. Are you going to wake up? It's really important for me to keep up the connection with him, to keep up the support and just to keep loving him for as long as I possibly can. <laughs> I don't know how long we have together. You're the one. Whoa. Woohoo. I don't know how things will unfold. Whoa. You've got your dance dirty. on. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps me going, I think, is just love. Um, he's my best friend. And I made a commitment to cherish him and care for him and I really want to see that through. If you need advice or information, you can call the National Dementia Helpline 1800 
100 500 or visit fightdementia.org.au.